preached for quite some time that science is agnostic. That is, it is neither able to prove nor be used to disprove the existence of a deity. Well, here's a clip for, of Eugenie Scott, the director of the National Center for Science Education, discussing exactly why science is agnostic and it can't be used to sit here and disprove the existence of a deity. Also note that this somewhat ties into my thoughts as to the need to discouple atheism from evolution simply because you turn people off immediately, and that is one of the major factors that, that people use to oppose evolution. The motivation for this anti-evolution position largely is the idea that science means God had nothing to do with it. And the intelligent design people believe that evolution is a totally materialist phenomenon. God can have nothing to do with it. And when a high school teacher teaches evolution, the high school teacher is telling the students to take their God and shove it. It's not happening. But I think we need to be reminded that we should be sure that when we teach evolution, whether at the college level or the high school level, that we be sure to not present it in a way that limits the ability of a student who is religious to accommodate his or her religious views to the science we are presenting. This actually involves a very important principle uh, called materialism, which is very confusing because we use it in two ways in science and philosophy. One way that we use the term materialism is in science. We talk of something called methodological materialism. Now, materialism is the idea that matter and energy uh, are used to explain the natural world. And in science, this is a methodology. We restrict ourselves to natural cause. Science is a limited way of knowing, I like to tell people. We are limited to explaining just the natural world. We're not telling you how to treat each other, morals and ethics. We're just trying to explain the natural world. And we limit ourselves to natural cause. The reason we limit ourselves to natural cause, to methodological naturalism, is not because all scientists are atheists, because they aren't. The reason we limit ourselves to natural cause is because the essence of science is testing ideas against the natural world. Just because an idea sounds good doesn't mean you accept it. You have to test it. An essential part of testing, as you learned in seventh grade, is to hold constant certain variables so that you can see the effect of changes and see whether your explanation really is the one that, that, that explains the phenomenon you're trying to, to dis, uh, explain. You have to hold constant, we call that control, it's, don't like that term, but holding constant certain variables is very important in being able to test a theory, test a hypothesis. If there is an omnipotent force in the universe, you cannot hold its actions constant. God, please don't act on these two cornfields. I want to make sure that it's the fertilizer that makes it grow. You can't put God in a test tube, right? You cannot test explanations involving supernatural cause, involving an omnipotent cause, because any outcome you get is compatible with the actions of that omnipotent cause. That's what omnipotence is all about. It's very useful. But because of that, because we can't test statements about God's actions, we just leave them out of science. But as my friend Robert Pinnock said, another Michigan um, a scholar, to say nothing of God is not to say that God is nothing. When we talk about cell division in biology, we don't say, you know, here are the enzymes that cause the chromosomes to line up in the midline, and God had nothing to do with it. And here are the enzymes that form the spindle fibers, and God had nothing to do with it. And here are the enzymes that make the cell break apart, and God had nothing to do with it. Of course not. When we talk about evolution, we talk about the phylogenies. We talk about the tree of life. We talk about how bears and dogs had a common ancestor in the Miocene. We're not saying, and God had nothing to do with it, because we don't talk about God acting or not acting when we're wearing our scientist hat. If as a religious individual you want to believe that God wanted bears and dogs to emerge out of a common ancestor, there's nothing in science that's going to say you can't say that. But there's nothing in science that you can use to test that either. And it's not a scientific idea because it's not testable. Okay? That's methodological materialism or methodological naturalism. There's also something called philosophical materialism. This is a philosophical view, not a scientific view, that says matter and energy is it, folks. There is no God. There are no ancestor spirits. There's no 
uh, supernatural whatsoever. Matter energy and their interactions is all that the universe is composed of. This is a philosophical view. It's held by a lot of people, but it is not a view that is compelled by science. Okay? I happen to hold that view, but I can't say that science proves that point of view. I have to say I hold that view because of my own particular background and what I think about reality. But a theist can, use, can look at the same empirical evidence that I look at and given his particular philosophical view, see the hand of God and so forth, I don't. Science is an equal opportunity substratum for philosophy, okay? It does not compel either theism or disbelief or, or philosophical materialism. But there are a lot of scientists around who kind of get this mixed up. And the creationists love to quote these folks. Uh, Richard Dawkins, uh, um, uh, Dennett, uh, William Provine. Uh, I'll give you an example from a Scientific American article by a friend of mine, uh, Michael Shermer, who wrote, he was talking about the Gallup poll, a paltry 12% accept the standard scientific theory that human beings have developed over millions of years from less advanced forms of life, but God had no part in this process. Excuse me? When did that become part of the standard scientific theory? The standard scientific theory is that evolution happened, that living things shared common ancestors. The standard scientific theory is that living things descended with modification from common ancestors. Full stop, period. If you believe God guided the process, that's fine. That's a theological belief. If you believe God had nothing to do with the process, that's fine. That's a philosophical belief. Neither are compelled by the scientific data. Michael is simply wrong when he says this. And the other scientists who make similar statements simply have not thought this through. I also wanted to take a second to clarify some comments that I made in an earlier video regarding ridiculing creationists. Now, I by no means meant to imply that you should ridicule them during a debate to persuade them. Of course, that'll never work. It, my, my thoughts are more so to attempt to create an atmosphere in public opinion that creationism is something to be laughed at, which it is. Um, if you make comments to random people or it's just part of your vocabulary, the public opinion will start to shift. And as soon as creationists start seeing their beliefs being mocked, not only by, you know, biologists or educated people, but by everybody, then that's how their, per, um, that's how their thoughts and mentality can be changed. Well, thanks again for your attention, guys, and here it is, your moment of zen. Hello, Governor of Alaska speaking. The lake hours are from 8 to 7. Sure, you take care now. John McClain, the guy from Die Hard? Oh, John McCain. Vice President? Ah, uh, okay. That sounds swell. Nice shot, Sarah. That's one reindeer that won't be climbing on our roof this Christmas Eve. Are you sure you want me to take this picture? If you ever run for office someday, this might come back to haunt you. Yeah, like that's ever gonna happen. Okay. The first runner-up is Miss Wasilla. Why, God, why? Hey, baby. You wanna take a ride on my snow machine? Todd, are you sure you haven't had too much to drink? I'm fine. Todd, you just killed the mayor of Wasilla. Looks like we're gonna need a new mayor. You build a bridge to nowhere, and that nowhere becomes somewhere. So I said, a bridge to nowhere. Thanks, but no thanks. The pipeline is Alaska's economic lifeline. We have to... Is everything all right? Yeah, I just had another baby. Where were we? Putin, what are you doing here? I've come to take back Alaska for Mother Russia. Not on my watch. Hiya! Your thighs are strong, like Russian bear. <laughs> <laughs>